Up to this large railroad station come buses, taxis, and private cars, carrying people who are going to travel by passenger train. At the entrance to the station, the cars stop and the people get out. Thousands of people pass through here every day on their way to and from trains. If their train is not ready, they may stay in this large waiting room, walking about or sitting on big benches. They must go to the ticket window and get tickets before going to the train. Inside each window is a ticket seller. Each one who rides on the train must buy a ticket to the place where he is going. Money from tickets helps pay the cost of running the trains. Near the trains are gates through which passengers must go. A gateman looks at the tickets to be sure that each passenger is on his way to the right train. It is almost time for this passenger train to leave the station, and the passengers are hurrying along the glistening sides of its coaches. The train will be pulled by this big streamlined diesel electric locomotive. Its engines are warming up, and inside the cab sits Mr. Schroeder, the engineer who has driven locomotives for many years. He is always ready. Inside the locomotive further back is the attendant, the engineer's assistant. He stays close to the big motors, for his job is to keep them in good running order. Burned gases from the engines go out through these pipes in the top. Each passenger can take a trunk with him free, and the last of these is going into the baggage car. Into another car go the last bags of mail. Carrying mail also helps pay the cost of running the train. Inside the mail car, railway mail clerks put together papers and letters for each town or city. The conductor, Mr. Owens, is in charge of the train. All aboard! All aboard! He signals the engineer. The train must start exactly on time, and now Mr. Schroeder must go to work. All the doors along the train are closed, and the engineer opens the throttle. Sand keeps wheels from slipping on their path of smooth steel rails. Wider and wider the throttle is open. The long train gathers speed as it winds its way along the tracks. Leading from the gates at the big station are many tracks, which gradually join each other farther out. A train dispatcher knows on which track each train should run, and he switches each to its proper track. The trains run under banks of signals which show the engineers whether they should go ahead or stop. Here is a signal ahead now. It is set for stop. Mr. Schroeder, the engineer, with hand on the brake, sets the air, and iron brakes close on the wheel. Now the signal changes to go. And again, the powerful locomotive pulls the train ahead. It is safe now to pass the signal. Inside one of the coaches, Mr. Owens, the conductor, is already taking up tickets, making sure that each one has paid for his ride. The passengers have comfortable seats. They can sit up or lie back easily if they want to rest. Overhead, out of the way, are racks filled with bags and parcels. The cars of the train are joined snugly together by a part called the vestibule. A highway crossing is ahead. <laughs> Now Mr. Schroeder closes the throttle to slow down the train, for a sharp curve is just ahead. The engineer knows exactly how fast he can go with safety.
The train is passing under a safe highway crossing built above the tracks. And now it runs alongside a river. The river valley is level, so it is an easy place to build level tracks. The last car on this train is called the observation car. Plenty of windows and seats all about. Here there are desks where passengers may write letters, and easy chairs and lounges where they may sit comfortably and chat with each other while they enjoy such sights as this beautifully winding stream. These men are whiling away the time playing cards. Those in the observation car now see a long freight train, cattle cars, empty coal cars, and a powerful steam engine. Soon, the train is going through a deep cut, made in a hillside, so the tracks could still be level. And now it approaches a tunnel, a big hole bored through a high, steep hill. Historic Harper's Ferry. Over the Potomac River, from the state of Maryland into the state of West Virginia. It is meal time for the passengers, and this is the dining car, an excellent restaurant that is part of the train. The steward shows the people to their seats and gives them menus, large cards with lists of food, so that each can choose the kind of food he likes. Some are already eating. A dining car is a great convenience to people traveling long distances by train. The food is brought in by waiters who are clever at balancing their large trays as the train speeds along. When the diners have decided what they want, the waiters go into the kitchen and repeat their orders to the chief cook, who is called the chef. He must keep many kinds of food on hand. The cooks are clean, and the kitchen of the dining car, although small, is kept spotless. A good meal in the dining car is a pleasant event for passengers during a long ride. Up in his cab, Engineer Schroeder has no thought of food. He must watch the track ahead. The safety of all the passengers depends on his skill and watchfulness. His train approaches a small village and dashes on through. The big steel rails sag under the weight of the rushing train. Onward, as darkness falls outside, the ever-watchful engineer speeds his passengers. It is almost bedtime. The Pullman porter begins to change seats into beds, taking out backs of seats to make bottoms for beds called berths. Above the seats, he unlocks a big curving door, and inside finds more articles for making up the berth. Mattresses, sheets, and pillows. Some he takes out of the berth for the one below and others he will use for the berth above. Those who are not yet ready for bed may have tables, magazines, newspapers, and writing materials with which to while away the evening. And always Mr. Schroeder alertly watches his locomotive and the track ahead, in the dark of night, through villages, around curves, through cuts and tunnels, over high bridges. The porter, having made up these two berths, puts in position a little ladder for the passenger who is to sleep above. Through the night rushes the train, its headlights shining on the rails of the track. The attendant, ever on watch over his motors, they are watching the track ahead. The safety, the lives of all his passengers depend on the skill and watchfulness of the locomotive engineer. Uh... 